Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone you happen to be in on the Global Watch International Call. We are at 3 p.m. Jerusalem time. It is the 29th of April, 2024. And be, being a fifth Monday, we have the Malta Watch, which is led by uh, Margaret Gregg. And uh, we're really excited to see what's going to happen for this watch and for everything that she has for us. And she does have a guest speaker, which is wonderful. She will introduce uh, him later on today. So I just say thank you, Margaret. I pray a blessing upon you. I uh, pray that the all the connections will work well. And Lord, that you will just keep this um, watch uh, alive for the whole hour without any um, problems. So we thank you for that in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Joe. Thanks for tech hosting for us and thank you for your faithfulness. And I also thank Global Watch and all the, the Global Watch people. We bless you all in Jesus' name. So um, we welcome you all for this Malta Watch and thank you for coming. And we hope that you will be blessed today. Let us pray. Father, we commit this time to you for your honor, for your glory that we may see your kingdom come to Malta and Goto and the nations as it is in heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen. So as we all know, we are at the end of celebrating the Passover feast. And uh, yesterday was the feast of the first fruit. And Yeshua being the first fruit of the redemptive plan of Abba Father, which he has had in his heart since the beginning of time. We here in our home, we celebrated the Passover meal and we were 18 people and we had some guests. Among them, we had Pastor Cyril and his wife and his family. We were all very blessed, but only when I read the readings of this week from Luke 24, these scriptures really stood out to me and I understood something. I understood the power of celebration and the Passover meal being celebrated in a body where there is unity, how very powerful it is. I also realized the power that Jesus has given us when he opens our eyes to see. So let us go to Luke 24 verses 13 to 16. It is the part from the road of to Emmaus. Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together all of these things which had happened. So it was while they were conversing and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. Many a times we can see this happening and we've seen this in Jesus' time when people saw him with their physical eyes, but they, they, did not, they did not know him. We know that some today read of him and they don't know him. But let's see what verses 30 and 31 says. Now it came to pass as he set at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished from the sight. Their eyes were opened through supernatural power of Jesus who gave this power to them through his love and compassion for them and also the power of the breaking of the bread. I believe that as we celebrated Passover meal and shared what is called the Afflicomen towards the end of the celebration, which is a symbol of Yeshua's broken body, it's a very special moment of communion together. After remembering all that the Father has done and how he has delivered the people of Israel from slavery, being a foreshadow of the coming of Yeshua, the son of God himself, 
to deliver us from sin through the cross and the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Many times we try to understand with our minds, but I discovered that when we allow the word of God in unity and in obedience, God opens doors of our eyes and ears to see and hear what in our own strength we can't. Because many times we want to do things in our own time. But I believe he's calling us back to his timeline. And when we come in obedience, we may not understand in our own minds, but when we celebrate and obey, we all felt on the day that the Lord touched our hearts in a deeper way and even our souls and brought such a knowing that in our minds we could not achieve a deeper level of unity in his revelation of his love for us. So he caused me to understand that he is wanting to bring back to us what he intended to be, as is spoken of in Genesis 1.1 and John 1.1, in the beginning, in the beginning. So we ask the Lord to give us the eyes to see more of him and what he, what he is doing in such a time as this. It's powerful. We are blessed that we can come to him. I would like us to meditate on this, to seek, to ask from him, to see more in the spirit what he wants to show us. So let us hear this worship song and let this wash over us. Then I will introduce our speaker and I believe he has more to show us. May the Lord open our eyes and our ears. In Jesus' name. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. I will now, oops, I will now introduce um, our guest speaker. Um, so now we have uh, Pastor Cyril Melot as our guest speaker. And we're going to hear from him what God's been giving him and what he's saying to us. And as we know, the theme for today, what he has for us is let there be light. Pastor Cyril is originally from Belgium, married to Olivia from Ghana. He is an ordained minister who served as a missionary and church planter in Slovakia, Croatia and the Netherlands, together with his wife for nearly six years. After diligently serving in a global organization, God set them apart again and called them to Malta and to Gozo, supported in that vision by his spiritual father, mentors, and his church. Pastor Cyril and Olivia have three children of seven, four, and two years old. They run a Christian retreat house in Gozo, and Cyril is also an itinerant teacher of the word of God. Since 2023, they started planting a new church from their home in Gozo with a desire to see God's kingdom established and his royal priesthood, a people who know the God, carrying out great exploits and to fulfill their God-ordained destiny to arise in this hour as a light in the darkness is raising up in such a time as this that we are living in. So Pastor Cyril, in your hands. And thank you very much. We bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray that the Lord will bless you more than you can ask or imagine in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 First of all, thank you very much for having me once again uh, at Global Watch. It's an absolute privilege and an honor to be among prayerful people. It's, uh, it's, it's a privilege, as I know, that prayer is the engine of the kingdom of God. Without prayer, we would not be doing what we do. Without prayer partners, we could not achieve what God allows us to achieve. So from the deepest of my heart, I'm grateful for each and every one of you in all the nations 
grateful for Ray and Margaret, especially Margaret today for once again inviting me during the Malta Watch. Uh, it's an absolute honor to serve in this way. And I pray that the word of God may come strong and powerful and may bring revelation to each and every one of us for our various nations. Um, I always try to be in that place of prayer uh, myself to to not just speak. I don't I don't like to speak for the sake of speaking. I like to speak when God wants to say something. <laughs> so so I'm trying to be uh, not rattling through my messages. We will see how far we get. This is um, a word that that will be used at our conference next week, uh, but it's just part of it because we don't have the time. In 25 minutes, I cannot share a whole day of content. <laughs> That's not possible. Um, but I do believe I can bring the foundation, uh, the foundational principles of it. And I believe it's a, a very timely word that God is putting on my heart. Um, I believe we, before I start, I will have a short word of prayer for God to help me in his mercies, by his grace. Father, I thank you that you've appointed me for this moment, this, this half hour with, with these beautiful people from all over the world. Father, let me not speak from my, my knowledge. Let me not speak from, from, from my heart, but let me speak from the word of God in a time for this, for a time as this. Not just a word, but a timely word, a, a, a Kairos moment for each and every one of us here at this Global Watch. I want, to ask, I want to ask you, Father, to bless each and every one of us with fresh revelation, fresh light on things that we need to see in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Oh, so I do believe um, that we can consider that the times that we live in are very biblical. The times that we live in are also very uh dark or we could say that that there's a lot of darkness in this time in the world i think everyone who switches on the news would would, would agree with that things that are happening in in israel and and the middle east but not just there also in europe uh things that are happening even here in this small island of malta there's a lot of darkness and uh i want us to start Back in the beginning, Margaret already mentioned it. I'm going to expand a little bit more on it. But in the beginning, let's go to the beginning where there was darkness. And it's very powerful what happens there. So Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. 1, to two, one verse 3 is kind of the anchor uh, verse for, for the, whole, the whole team. Let there be light. Um, but Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, I want to share that uh, for a moment. In the beginning, God create the, created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and divided the light from the darkness. I will end this there for a moment, but I want us to look at the first three verses for a moment. God created heaven and earth. And he created before he spoke. As a matter of fact, the very first word that comes out of his mouth or the words that come out of his breath is, let there be light. That grabbed my attention over the past months. So light was not created. Light was spoken into existence through the word of God. Another verse that has kept me busy for the past months is, 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 or almost a year now, is Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. And if you go a little bit further in that, you say, because you rejected knowledge, I reject you from being priests for me. 
Now, there's a problem if we cannot be priests for God, we don't have access to heavenly realms. As prayer people, we, we should be very aware of that as, as, as prayerful uh, global watch prayer, uh, a prayer ministry, that if we reject knowledge, we cannot be priests for God. If we cannot be priests for God, we cannot access the heavenly realms because God called us a royal priesthood, which means we are priests before we are royalty. Amen. So let there be light must be extremely significant because it is the first word that God speaks into existence. And then afterwards, he continues to create. But let there be light was a spoken word. Now, John chapter one, of course, that is connected to this Genesis chapter one, verse one to five. In the beginning was the word. Uh, Hosea, sorry, Mar Margaret, not Isaiah, Hosea 4 to 6, 4 verse 6. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Everybody has heard this, this, this passage and preached on it, maybe also, or prayed into it. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. So in Christ, in his word, in him is life. And that life is the light of man. So if light is life, then darkness is dead. We agree on that. So I went to look into the concept of darkness. What, what, is, what is darkness actually? Why is there darkness? What does it mean when there is darkness? And I went to, I, I go on Google then to do some research. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a professor researcher. I'm a Google researcher. But of course, you find some, some interesting things there. And one of the things that I found is that darkness, what is darkness scientifically? Darkness does not exist by itself as a unique physical entity. But it is simply the absence of light. Anytime you block out most of the light, for instance, for instance, by cupping your hands together, you get darkness. There is no way that there can be darkness where there is light. Darkness cannot dim light, but light always lights up darkness. So God speaks light into existence through his word. It is, a, it is defined as a lack of illumination, an absence of visible light, or a surface that absorbs light, such as a black one. And the features of darkness, or what, what darkness is connected to, is sorrow, defeat, failure, losses, death, and destruction. Now, let's go back to the word of God. John 10, verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. Death, destruction, darkness. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Christ, the light, the light that was given to us, the word of God that became flesh. John chapter 1, verse 14, he became flesh. The word became flesh. So what I believe is important in a season as this is that we have a fresh revelation of light, a fresh revelation of what light is, who light is, and how we can be light. Because we have been called the light of the world, salt of the earth and the light of the world. But I also, I cannot go into depth into the whole teaching now, but I also have learned that the only way for us human beings to increase our light is to feed on the word of God. But not just feed on the word of God as reading through it, we have to receive revelation of the word of God. The more revelation we receive, 
the brighter our light will become for people to see. Because he also says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God. Now, seeing good works in, 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 in those terms is we want to be light to the world. We want to brighten up darkness. Now, let me, let me share briefly from my testimony. I might have shared it before the testimony itself. But so there was a moment in my life where I wanted to take my own life, where I wanted to jump from the fifth floor. I was in darkness. And the place where I was in, a, in, a, in an apartment, I, it, it, it was a very dark place for me. My circumstances was that I lost everything. I messed up my whole life and I was done and over with. But in that moment, in that very moment, Jesus stepped in. That's where I got born again. And in the moment that he reveals himself to me, the whole room brightens up for me. And it is that very moment that I became born again, received Christ, and have never looked back. So the interesting thing in this moment is I'm still in the same place. I'm still in the same circumstances as I was, like a second before. My circumstances have not changed. My location has not, have not changed. But I've received the revelation of light, which gave me hope and which made me to see a dark room as a light room. This is a spiritual experience. This is not a physical experience. This is not a physical light that we see. This is a similar experience, I believe, as what Paul had when he was thrown off his horse. He saw a light. So the world in this time needs a fresh revelation of light which means it needs a new revelation, a greater revelation of Jesus Christ, a more powerful revelation of Jesus Christ, the church, the body of Christ. Many are moving through life based on revelations of 10 years ago. And they are teaching on revelations of 10 years ago. And they don't understand why nothing is moving forward. But Jesus himself said to his apostles, to his disciples, there is much more that I want to show you, but you cannot, or, or share with you, but you cannot bear it now. Why was that? In that time, these disciples were not born again. They had not received the Holy Spirit. They would not be able to receive the revelation that Jesus wanted to release to them. So they had to wait. And we are the blessed people of God because we have the, the Holy Spirit in us. And the Holy Spirit keeps on revealing because that is what he does. That is why he is our helper. To help us to understand what God is doing in any given time. Problem is that we, for, for that, we need to be yielded to that light. We need to be yielded to that Holy Spirit. If we always want the Holy Spirit to work for us, rather than we to come and receive from the Holy Spirit and work for him, we get stuck because we have this great prophetic word or great revelation five years ago, and it is manifesting, but things might have to be added to it. So in my dark place, all of a sudden, I felt light. Nothing changed. But my revelation of my entire life, my entire identity changed instantly. And if, it, if, if the body of Christ, and then I always talk about the global body of Christ, 
would receive a fresh revelation of light, of who, if, if, if that light would come in to their eyes. Now, the, 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 the word that, 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 uh, that Margaret shared from, from, from Luke, he opened their eyes. So he, he was standing right in front of them. They didn't recognize him until he opened their eyes, until they received the revelation. In the book of Acts, there is the Ethiopian guy. And, and who was it? Uh, forget him now. I didn't have this in my notes. Uh, comes to meet him. Is it, is it Philip, the apostle? Comes to meet him. And this Ethiopian is reading through the scriptures. And he says, do, do you know the gospel? Do you understand what's going on? No, how can I understand? Unless someone explains to me. He said, so you're just reading this without understanding. And Philip helps him to receive the Holy Spirit and to receive the revelation of the scriptures. And I believe in this season, we need a fresh revelation of light. We need to understand as children of God, we are children of light. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. Let me see where my time is. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 um, how many minutes do I have left? So the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Again, I believe it refers to the state of the body of Christ today. If you genuinely believe that what you're doing is good, but it's actually darkness, then how great is that darkness? If we don't have understanding anymore of light and darkness, the entertainment that is happening in some churches in the United States, forgive me for the United States, but it's just what's happening. It is crazy. Why would you have to entertain people to keep them in seats if you can give them a revelation that will keep them alive? If they receive life from the body of Christ, you don't have to worry about them leaving. If you have to entertain them to keep them, you're leading them in, into a dark place, into death. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 14 speaks about that. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Back to Matthew chapter 6. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great then is that darkness? If we have not exercised our spiritual senses to discern good and evil anymore, if, 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 if there's no more line between this is light and this is darkness, then where is the body of Christ going? Remember that God divided in Genesis chapter 1 light from darkness. So there should be a clear distinction between what is light and what is darkness. So he has given us light by giving us Christ. In him was life and that life was the light of men. He has given us light when he gave us his word. Your word, O oh Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. But if we are not hungry to receive that revelation from the word of God, we will walk in darkness and the world will become a darker place because then we have the blind leading the blind and everyone will fall into a ditch. Let there be light. May God give us fresh revelation for the time. And I believe one of the fresh revelations that the church needs is the revelation of who Israel is. 
if the church does not understand Israel, they will walk into a ditch. I was blessed to be at, at that Passover uh, meal. It was such an amazing experience because I've never done it. But I've always known as Gentiles, we are the ones who are grafted in. Now, for us now to bear fruit as the ones who are grafted in, we can only take juice from the root. And the root is a Jew. So churches might reject some, some I mean, ceremonial laws. Yes, I'm, that, that's open for discussion. I, I don't think we need to keep them. But there are still principles, precepts, laws, ordinances, patterns that we need to understand and can only understand from Israel. If we don't have that revelation, we can never bear the fruit that God wants us to bear. Because then we are a, a branch that is grafted in, but is not taking the food to bear the fruit. And then we will wither and die. It's that simple. So I believe in this time and hour, let there be light. Is a light of who God truly is. He's not, I'm going to use funny words, but he's not a long-haired hippie that comes to love everyone. He has principles and patterns and, 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 and ordinances to be kept if we indeed, yes, he wants the whole world to be saved. That's his desire. And yet not all will make it to heaven because he also says just as much as he wants everyone to be saved, he also just as much says, get away from me. I never knew you. And the knowledge of God, I believe that that today is lacking in the body of Christ. There is the knowledge of the church and who the disciples were, but there is not yet or no longer the revelation of the supreme power and almightiness of God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That God is no longer known in our generation as it should be known. And until that light comes, the church as we know it today will be a powerless entertainment institution. I don't know. This was not in my notes, but God forgive me if that's wrong. But if we don't step away from the entertainment and get back to the revelation of the word of God, the body of Christ will be lacking many members in heaven. I'm going to, I think I will leave it there. I will close with this. I will just close with this. First Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you, where? Out of darkness, into his marvelous light. Let there be light. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Cyril. So uh, I think it's very clear that we really need to start. Actually, I really want to honor and bless Global Watch because I believe we are walking in that place. Most of us are. And uh, we are, we all know that we've been grafted in, uh, most of us coming on Global Watch, but maybe some who are new, who are coming new, or maybe will be hearing this, may, may not know. So um, we, we thank you for this message because it is very much the truth and very much in line with Global Watch and uh, Fred and Sue's uh, um, seeing things and most of us in prayer houses here. So we have um, 
three prayer points. We don't have too much. Um, if uh, Joe can please put them, thank you very much. So the first prayer point is we pray for a deeper life in the Lord and his Holy Spirit for us all as intercessors, as we seek to pray as he would have us pray, not from our hearts or our mind. If you have something else, um, Pastor Sir, please let, let me know. Yeah, okay. Uh, second prayer point, we would like us to pray for the seminar that Pastor Cyril is doing together actually with two more people uh, on Saturday, 4th May, called Let There Be Light, that many will come to the true light of Jesus, Yeshua, to be a light when the darkness is on the increase. And point number three, pray for the Ecclesia in Malta and Gozo to rise up to the task that the Lord is setting before us and calling us for, so that his kingdom will come to Malta and to Gozo and in your nation, on all nations, as it is in heaven. Um, thank you, Molly. Okay. So um, if we can raise our hand, please, and pray. Uh, we have uh, lesser than 20 minutes because we need to be ready for the debrief, as we know. Um, so um, um, anybody would like to start or, yeah, go ahead. Amen. Yes, we need to have our eyes and our hearts. Let's try to be enlightened. Thank you, uh, Peter Raymond. We can also pray into that. If you'd like to pray to that, Peter, would you like to go ahead? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I do ask that you would give us that discernment of your light and that the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us. Lord, I likewise just continue to pray for that spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation of Jesus to be manifested in your people, in your church, to receive the revelation from you that Pastor Cyril was sharing about, that the need to have fresh revelation of your light. And so, Lord, I ask and pray that you would continue to shine the light of the love of Christ into our hearts, that you would help us to have eyes to see, to discern, to um, be open to the light of your glory, and that you would refresh our hearts and help us to continually walk in your ways, in your light, in your truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Peter. And not to be happy with a little, because sometimes that's where we stop. We get a little and we stop. We need to keep on asking for more. Thank you, Peter. Blair, go ahead. Thank you. I want to continue with uh, Peter's prayer. As he shared that we would receive uh the love of Christ Jesus. And that, 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 that we receive of that, Father, that I, I, I pray that, 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 that we as, as your people will be focused on, on, on the life of Christ and, and him crucified and on the third day raised from the, get, the dead. Father, that, that's, that is the love of God that without which none of us would be here. We would be lost in our sin. And it's that price that you paid that none of us could, could ever pay. That gives us the hope of life. And, and, then, and then Christ said to us, if anyone wants to come after me, let him pick up, uh, uh, deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. Father, that, that as uh, Sir Cyril was saying, that, that you came to him and gave him new light. And it's only with that light that, that, that we can have 
hope. And so it's not in us, but it's denying ourselves and that love of God that you've shown us. You tell us to love one another as you have loved us. Father, may that be what defines us as a people. Not our knowledge or works, but our love for one another because it's, it's that love that you, the creator of the universe, commanded your son to come and that he laid down his life for us so that we could be with you. Why would you even do that? That is a love that is incomprehensible, but, and the world can't see it, but may we who have been blessed through that show that love so that it's that, that people say, I want to know that. I want to have what you, for your God to be my God, that there would be a revival that has never, has never been in the world. Lift that up and pray for Malta, for Gozo, for the United States, for Israel, for the world, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Blair. Mary, thank you. Father, I bring before you Malta and Gozo. It's past history, it's present history, and it's future history. Father, I gather every form of darkness before you by the Spirit. Into this darkness, Father, with you, I declare, let there be light, Christ, the light. Let there be light, Christ, the light. Let there be light, Christ, the light, for it is the light that makes everything manifest. Father God, may Malta and Gozo shine, the light of Christ shine so brightly that it will be as a beacon of light pulsing out by the spirit, the word of life into the surrounding nations. May its oceans be clean, the air above, the earth beneath and everyone in it. And wherever you're, the peoples that you put into this nation, Father, wherever they've gone, I pray that they too will be beacons of light, beacons of the light of the gospel of Christ. And Father God, I bring you this seminar this weekend. May your light shine so brightly in each one. May your holy fire rise up, Father, to consume all darkness, to be gone all strongholds of the mind and in the culture and in the religion, to bring forth the fullness of the new man in Christ Jesus in Jesus' name, Father, to you be the glory, the honor, and the praise. Holy Spirit, breathe your fresh breath upon Malta and Gozo in Jesus' name. To you, Father, that, Father, they will bear much fruit, lasting fruit, Father, that you be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Mary. Molly, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just want to thank you and bless you for this time that your light is shining. It is shining through Pastor Sarah, it's shining through your word. It is coming to us with such glory. And I just want to thank you, Father, for the light of the gospel. Lord, we pray and ask you, Father, that I'm declaring from uh, reading from 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. The God of this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, 
has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Father, we are decreeing this glory to be revealed on May 4th. Father, for this seminar that is coming forth, Father God, that many will see the light of the gospel, that they will come out of darkness into your marvelous light, that a royal priesthood and a holy nation of Malta and Goza is being raised up. Father God, that many souls will receive the light of the gospel. Father, that the eyes that have been blinded will be opened, the windows of their souls be opened. Father God, give them as well as for each one of us, the revelation of Jesus Christ in the knowledge of your son, Jesus. Father, we thank you for that spirit of wisdom and revelation. Lord, the, the glorious light of Jesus, the radiance and the brilliance of the father seen in the son. And so father, I decree, we decree, we come as global watchmen and we decree over you, Malta. We decree over Gozo. We decree over this meeting and gathering. Arise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the peoples. But the Lord has risen upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. The nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Amen. Thank you very much, Molly. Um, can we keep our prayers short, please, because we have debrief soon. Thank you, Molly. Uh, Hilary, please. Thank you. Thank you. I was um, just wanting to bless Malta to come into your true God-given calling and identity. And we just want to praise you and thank you. Thank you so much for your word, Pastor Zero. You put it so beautifully. God's been stirring all those scriptures in me. I feel so encouraged. And I really believe this is his strategy. When there is darkness, you speak the light. And you know, if for Paul's calling, he, the apostle, he was a Saul, I suppose. He was called and he, he, was, he testified in Acts 26, 18, that he was told to turn their eyes from Satan to Christ. So Father, I pray for the revelation to come that a lot of good things people have been looking at, I was one of them, seeking, but in all the wrong places. And where there's been the angel of light, the false counterfeits that seem so enticing, that, Father, they would be recognized for what they are, that they are deception, they are death, hell, the grave, darkness, and they are on that wide road to destruction. So we say thank you, Father, for Pastor Cyril having this anointing, this mandate to speak to the manifold wisdom of God, to the powers and principalities in the heavenly realms at this gathering. And that, Father God, that I pray principalities will fall. They will lose their power and authority in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare, Father, that all this... Um, rubbish i'm sorry don't mind me call it that but all this other stuff that's been raising itself up against the knowledge and love of god will be exposed like the emperor without his clothes on and people will suddenly come to their senses like the prodigal in the pig pen and they will see what they thought was so glamorous and glorious for the awful tawdry devastating darkness that it really is and Lord, we pray that many listening to Pastor Cyril will come to the revelation of your true identity for them, that you have, you've created them in your image and likeness. They're actually created to be your image bearers, to carry your light, and they are fearfully and wonderfully made, and that you are the creator, and all these lies and deceptions about evolution and whatever else would just be exploded. And as Joseph said, the very thing that the enemy intended for destruction, the Lord Jesus Christ has turned for his good and his glory. So we're just speaking a divine shift from darkness to light, from Amen. filth and unrighteousness to righteousness, light and truth and hearts hungering for the word of God 
in Jesus' name, pure hearts who will see Jesus. Amen. Thank you very, thank you very much, Hilary. Adeola, your hand was up. Would you like to pray? Uh, yeah, and I know we've just got a few moments. So, Abba Father, I just yes. want to agree with everything that my sisters have said. Some of them pretty much took the words out of my mouth. I thank you, Abba Father, that uh, in Malta, Abba Father, uh, Saul, who was Paul, did I get it the right way around? No, Paul, yes, so Paul, who was Saul, uh, was able to find um, a place of refuge, O oh Lord. And so I just pray, Abba Father, that the earth that witnessed and bore um, evidence to everything that you allowed him to do in that land will now be able to uh, hear the reverberations, let the sound uh, reverberate and then bring forth, oh Lord, those uh, the ancient paths, oh Lord, that are still speaking over the land of Malta. We thank you, Abba Father, that there has been a war over Malta, and the EU in particular has had tried to take um. Uh, Malta away from the path that you had designed for it. I ask Abba Father that with this meeting, O oh Lord, more and more and more of your light would be shed. Let this be a pass over time indeed for uh, Malta so that the reason for which you set them together as an ethnos starts to manifest in the name of your only begotten son, Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. Thank you very much, Adeola. Um, uh, Pastor Sir, do you have the last word that you'd like to say? Because we need to um, hand over now. The only thing that I want to uh, pray for each and every one of us is that we may wake up in this season and time every single day with a stronger revelation of the light of God in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I would like to just say one thing because um, uh, um, you mentioned prophetic words. Some people are, are uh, on, a, uh, on a prophetic word of five years ago, but I would like to mention that um, Shirley Momberg, uh, who has given us, uh, 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 whatever you call it, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, sorry, that she told us that we need to work on a prophetic word. It doesn't lie there. We need to visit it. We need to pray about it. It's 100%. not something that we just... So I just wanted to mention that. Sorry, yeah, so, uh, Sherry, I have to mention that for you. So we exactly, steward, steward the prophecy. Yes. And, and we have... That's a whole different teaching. We have to yeah. work the prophecy into manifestation through fresh revelation every single day. Because otherwise, we just have that prophetic word. We just park it there. No, we have to pray on it. Why do we pray? To receive revelation. Yeah. To receive light. To move forward into the prophecy. We have to work. There's part of us. that There's a part in the prophetic word that we need to put in motion. So, and, but anyway, that's a different teaching. <laughs> but, but thank you oh, very wait, a wait, 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 wait a minute. This is exactly... What the Lord put on my heart, Margaret and Pastor Cyril, you know, last week we were in Washington, D.C., declaring this prophetic alignment of repentance, realignment, and resolve to see the prophetic uh, picture of America come to pass. And the Lord said, now this must go from nation to nation to nation to for the people to raise up that prophetic decree, that prophetic alignment with what God has for that nation. Because I believe that that is, if it's God's willing, a pathway for his return. When he sees his people align with what he has spoken over that nation, you better believe the gates of heaven are going to open up. Here, okay, let, let, let me give like a very 10 second example. Someone has a prophecy, you are going to speak for large congregations. And the person has never spoken before. If the person is going to sit in the couch until the large congregation is in front of him, it's never going to happen. We have to work into the prophecy. 
we have to start preparing. If if I'm entrusted with a large uh, congregation, I have to be prepared to feed that congregation. So I have to start preparing and I have to receive the revelation that this specific congregation will need. So it's manifesting the prophecy. Amen. Yeah, part to play. So very well, great work that you're doing. Thank you for sharing. Well, that's the process. I think God is all, do we even know our prophetic um, destiny in a nation? So we need some Bereans to start digging that up. And then when, and when that happens, the word can be spoken and then the atmosphere shift and alignment comes. Okay, Susan. So if people weren't stirred up enough already, they're now like doubly stirred up and, uh, so, uh, great can, job, can Margaret. Just...